if you download the um, scorecard, which you can access also in the show notes of this podcast episode, I'll also um, promote it on our socials and send it out to our email list. Um, essentially, if you're around the 400 plus points, anywhere between 400 and 500 points, when you fill out that scorecard, you're around the mark um, comparatively to the past of what it takes to become a first full-time uh, employee at an elite pro club like Marifield Club. If you're 200 to 399, you're probably about a year or two away. Um, so use the scorecard and, and find some deficits in your experience or in your uh, academic background in, in what areas you need to upskill yourself. Um, and if you're under 199 points, you're probably three years away. So it could be a wake up call for some of you that thought, oh, I'm going to finish my degree. Uh, I've spent, you know, I've done a little bit in, in community sport, a little bit in semi-pro. I'm now ready to land my first full job. How many years of semi-pro slash community sport did you complete before you uh, landed your first full-time contract in pro sport? So I know a lot of you have reached out and, and to get a bit of a gauge on how long it takes before you're around the mark. So the most here, 36%, it was, it was split down the middle. So 36% were either one to two seasons or three to four seasons. Okay, so majority were around that two to four seasons um, going off uh, this data. That's aligned with myself as well. So if I answer the questionnaire to make it 12, uh, for me, it was four seasons. Then the second most, interestingly, 18% were seven plus seasons. So that just goes to show you how competitive it is uh, and how demanding it is to land and, and how few opportunities there are. Uh, and then 9% were five to six seasons. So um, a lot of years putting in the work uh, at uh, at semi-pro level. What was your first full-time role? I think this is a good one, just to get an idea of what experiences you want to take at the semi-pro level. So, you know, obviously at the top, you've got your high-performance manager, you've got your strength and power coach, so the head weights coach. Then you've got roles like the development, athletic development coach, where you're looking after the young players uh, and looking, thinking about long-term athlete development. And then you've got your sports scientist, rehab coach. There's lots of different specialties. Um, so first full-time role, the biggest or most popular, 36%, head of academy, strength and conditioning coach, which is, which is the same for myself. So I was my first full-time role was at Hawthorne Football Club. I was looking after the first of four-year players with their strength and conditioning. Uh, they were typically your VFL players, um, you know, of the AFL listed uh, that played VFL on the weekends. And then you're managing the high performance program of the VFL squad, which is Box Hill Hawks. Second most was equal. So 27% was a PhD sports scientist. What academic qualifications had you completed for your first full-time contract? 72% Bachelor of Sports Science in Human Movement. 18% Masters of Sports Science Human Movement. And 9% filled out other um, which was a Bachelor of Physiotherapy. Um, so goes to show once you've completed your Bachelor of Sports Science, um, you are more than around the mark qualified to be able to get a full-time job in pro sports. So for a lot of you listening in there that have your Bachelor of Sports Science or perhaps you're listening and you're finishing your Bachelor of Sports Science, if you've maximised your time and you're, um, you've got a lot of work experience under your belt, you've now got an opportunity to land your first full-time job at the end of this year. So don't use that as a, from a mindset point of view anyway, it shouldn't be an excuse if you haven't got your master's. It certainly wasn't for me. So once I finished my bachelor's because I was a mature age, I finished mine later on. I would have been about 25, 26 when I finished mine. Uh, I did um, land my first full-time job at the end of that, um, of, of finishing my bachelor's. Did you have a mentor or someone in the industry that helped guide you along your journey? Of the 11 that uh, answered, uh, all of them said yes. So they've all had support along the way, which is um, interesting to note. So um, I would agree with that as well. I definitely had support um, and guidance leading to my first full-time contract. Um, and I think it's a big one. So if you haven't got a support network around you, those that have walked your path where you want to go uh, and can give you those actual tips because they know what's relevant and what's not, um, definitely that should be at the top of your list. What would your advice be to yourself starting out your career in high performance sport? So here are some of the um, key pointers, which is probably, uh, I find, probably the, the best insight in, and best uh, actual tips that you can take from, from this questionnaire. First one was take risks, put yourself out there. Second, surround, your, surround yourself with great people who care about you. Say yes to everything that is ethically asked of you and keep a journal of your reflections. 
Be pa third one, be patient, listen and learn. Fourth, it is very high demand occupation. Some people are in the right place at the right time and make the transition seamlessly from intern to employee. However, for most being an intern, we're not always resulting in employment. If you truly love what you do, you will be happy to work at any level. If you do that for long enough while also developing your skills and networking along the way, you will eventually get there. Take all the gigs you, that, that uh, gives you real world experience. 